You're watching the Spirit Food Christian Center Worldwide Webcast, broadcasting live every Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Yes, amen, hallelujah. When Spirit Food comes to you, blessings will flow. Say yes. The Bible is God speaking to me. I am what the Word declares I am. I can do what the word declares I can do. I have what the word says I possess. I am a believer, not a doubter. Therefore, God's word is being confirmed in my life with signs following. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah and amen. Turn to someone and tell them you love them. And, and praise be unto God. We have a chance to break forth and partake of the word of God today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let's open our Bibles, please, to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. You know, when you have an understanding that the Lord loves you, that he came that you might have life and have life more abundantly, then you understand his desire for you is for you to live a blessed life. Walking with the Lord is not a curse. Being holy is not bad. It's good. Walking in the abundance of which God has prepared and provided for you in the covenant of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a good thing. So let's look at Mark chapter 11. And we're going to begin at verse 22 because Jesus is explaining to his disciples and to all of us who believe on him that we should walk in the blessings of the Lord by faith. And when I say faith, I'm not talking about a denominational persuasion. I'm talking about having a genuine confidence in God according to his word. And there are individuals that don't understand that faith is what allows and permits and makes it possible for God to move in your life. So let's look at Mark chapter 11 and verse 22. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Let's all read that out loud together. Have faith in in God. Once again, have faith in God. Now, in the margin of my Bible, there is a number attached that says, or it could be stated, have the faith of God. Have the faith of God. Another translation reads it this way. Have the God kind of faith. So when we say have the God kind of faith, that's to be distinguished from the word faith being used by others that may not examine or understand that there is a faith that God is referring to and talking about. And this faith we are told as Christians to be in possession of. Everybody point to yourself and say it again. I have the God kind of faith. Now since we have the God kind of faith, let us make sure we do and let us make sure that we're in line with scripture. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You can put a marker there in Mark chapter 11. We're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we'll look at verse 13. Since Jesus told his disciples to have the God kind of faith, 
And here we are, approximately 2,000 years removed from when it was written. We're told from the scriptures in the scripture of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Notice it says that by the Apostle Paul, writing under the Holy Ghost, it says, we, that's talking about us born-again believers, we, everybody say we means me, all right, all of us who believe on Jesus, we having the same spirit of faith. Wow. So having means we are in possession of it. So when Jesus said, have the God kind of faith, isn't it a blessing to understand and to know that Paul is acknowledging that as believers in Christ Jesus, we have the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Now notice in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, he tells us that we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, and he explains how that spirit of faith that we're told to be in possession of, or what his disciples were told to be in possession of, he told them, he said, you have the God kind of faith, you have faith in God, we're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, where he informs us of how the God kind of faith works. I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. So we could identify it this way. The God kind of faith, when it's in your possession, which we are, do possess because we are believers in Christ Jesus. This is the way to describe it. We believe and therefore speak. We believe and therefore speak. Everybody say, I believe, therefore I speak. Now, what if a person believes but doesn't speak? Are they operating in the God kind of faith? Well, according to this, the scriptures identify that the God kind of faith operates this way. We believe and therefore speak. So I must then not only believe in my heart what God declares, but I also must speak what God declares. If I'm going to operate in the God kind of faith, I have to believe God's word, but I also have to do what else? I have to speak. God's word. Now, what happens as I operate in this God kind of faith? Looking at verse 18, let's look at verse 18 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, or we could say it this way, the things that are perceivable by the senses. He says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Now, how do you see something that's not seen? You see something that's not seen because the thing that you don't see in your natural, physical, five-sense dimensional world, that is not what you're to look at. You're to look at that which is existing in the invisible realm. And when we talk about the invisible realm, the invisible realm is the realm where God lives and God functions. So when we talk about the spiritual application of faith, because faith is a spirit, we have the what? Same spirit of faith. So we're talking about spiritual things, aren't we? So since we're talking about spiritual things, God is explaining unto us that there are things that exist in the spiritual realm that is not physical, perceivable, but yet if you believe and you are willing to confess what operates and what is there in the spiritual realm, if you'll confess it in the physical realm, 
You know what's going to happen? It will manifest. It will manifest. So as believers in Christ Jesus, we must be people who are confident that we walk by faith and not by sight. Or we could say it this way, we walk by faith and not by the things that our physical realm may di- try to dictate to us. Walking by faith means that I'm confident of what I hope for. I am totally convinced of the things that do not, I do not see. I'm willing to know that what God told me I'm to be in possession of, I'm willing to put that into operation. How do I put it into operation? I believe what God says, and therefore I speak what God says. And the manifestation will take place. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, chapter 4, verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are not seen are temporal. But the things which are, let's look at this. But the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Now let's read it again, and I'll read it like I can read like I've been in school. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Now he's explaining unto us that the things which are seen in the natural realm, those things can be changed. Why? Because the the realm of the spirit is more powerful and can make a change with the physical realm because the things that are in the physical came from the things which are spiritual. For example, God is a spirit. Turn over in your Bibles to John's Gospel, the fourth chapter. Turn over to John's Gospel, chapter 4, and let's all agree here that what Jesus says concerning our Heavenly Father, we must, as believers, John chapter 4, verse 4, verse 24, we must receive or we must believe what Jesus said. Now, if I believe what Jesus said, then if I'm going to operate in faith, then I have to be willing to speak what Jesus says. In John chapter 4, verse 24, God is a what? He's a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. Highlight that, underline that. Notice that it's a capital S there, which explains that God is a spirit. And since he is a spirit, and they that worship him who is a spirit, we must, capital, focus on the word must, imperative necessity. We must worship him, how? In spirit and in truth. Now, how do we worship him who is a spirit? Well, we're able to worship him who is a spirit because we're a spirit. Now, remember we said that I'm in possession of, you're in possession of the God kind of faith? We must then identify that we who are a spirit being made after the image of God who is a spirit We're told then to operate in spiritual reality. We're to operate in spiritual things that he tells us we're to do. Jesus said, have the God kind of faith. We saw that the spirit of faith is something that all of us who believe in Jesus, we all possess. We have the same spirit of faith. And since we have the same spirit of faith, we're to operate in faith to make changes in the world that we live in. 
Now, someone would say, well, didn't you say that the physical realm was dependent upon God who made the physical things? Yes. We came to the first conclusion that God is a spirit. And since God is a spirit, then is God able to make a change in the physical realm? Yes. Turn over to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis, the first chapter. Now, as we're looking at this, we're going to the place of this. As believers, we're told to make changes with our faith. We're told to craft or to design or to walk in the lifestyle which our faith can produce. So we as believers in Christ Jesus must be imitators of our Father. When God sees something that he wants to have changed, what does he do? He speaks to it because he believes and he speaks. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, does it say God created the heaven and the earth, or does it say that the heaven and the earth created God? God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. So we see the word spirit there in verse 2, and notice it's capitalized. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now underline the words God said. God said. And we're going to continue to look and glance at verses of Genesis chapter 1 because God is changing, God is making things, God is creating things, but before he makes it, he always speaks it. And he always speaks it before anything is seen or anything is changed. So therefore, God, in verse 3 it says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Every time you see the words, and God said, I want you to underline it. Verse 4, God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 6, and God what? And God what? And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let, the, let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Verse 8, and God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Verse 9, and God, what? Said, underline it, let the waters under heaven under the heaven, be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Now what happened after he said it? After he said it, it came to pass. Okay. And it was so. Verse 10. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together on the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. Verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tr yielding tree after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Verse 12 of Genesis chapter 1. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Isn't it interesting that good always happens after God said? That what God said comes to pass, but what he said he was pleased with because God always speaks in a manner of what he desires, and what God desires is always good. Now, this is very, very important because God has made us, each and every one of us, from him. And all of us, he loves. 
And since he loves us, then how should we speak about ourselves? Good. Verse 13. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Verse 14, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And then let's skip down to verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures or creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great wells and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Verse 24 of Genesis chapter 1. And God, what? Said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, the, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so, and God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Verse 26, and God what? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. Male and female created he them. I'm reading this and I'm taking time to go over this because every time God does something, he always speaks it first. He speaks it first. And since he speaks it first, why is it that it comes to pass? Because God what? Said. Because God said. Now, since he told us that man was made in his image, when he says man, he's referring to mankind, but he's also referring to the fact that we who are made in the image of God, we are expected to act like God. We're expected to act like God. Don't you, anybody here have children? I have children and grandchildren, right? Do you know something? It would freak me out if my children started acting like uh, dogs and cats. I mean, what if they, you know, they're born, they come forth out of the womb, and then the next thing you know, they start crawling around and try to walk on four legs, you know, but they, don't, they have two hands and two feet. But what if they were like growing up going, meow, meow, meow? I would start to think that something's not right. Or if they started to bark, why? It's because the children are expected to grow up and act like their parents. Are you with me? This is just simple understanding. I expect my children to be speaking people because their parents, my wife and I, we speak. We don't crawl. Not unless we're involved in something, you know, where you're doing a dramatic presentation or something like that, or we're playing with them. But for the most part, we walk on two legs and we speak words. That's how we function. I expect my children to grow up to be just like us. Now, as believers in Christ Jesus, we're expected to grow up and be just like our Father. Just like him. Turn back over to Mark chapter 11 now. Mark the 11th chapter. And we see that Jesus, in verse 22, he said, have faith in God. Or we could say it this way, have the faith of God. Or we could say, have 
the God kind of faith. Now, we all understand, and we read this earlier, that the God kind of faith, it does what? You believe, and therefore you what? Speak. Again, you believe, and then you what? Speak. You do what? You believe, and there you speak. Now, Jesus is going to explain to his disciples about the God kind of faith because he's expecting his disciples to understand how the God kind of faith works so that they can be communicators of that to the people that the gospel is being proclaimed to. The gospel means good news. So Jesus is going to send forth his disciples after his death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension. He's going to send them forth as well as all of us who believe on him. He sends us forth into the earth or the earth realm for what purpose? To proclaim the good news. But what is the good news? The good news is that Jesus is alive from the dead, that he is Lord and he is Savior. And if we believe on him, receive him as our Savior, and call upon his name and declare he is my Lord and my Savior, then what will happen? Eternal life will be imparted into my heart or my spirit, and I can become what is called a new creation. I can become what? A possessor of eternal life. I can be identified as a child of God. Scripture says in John's Gospel, chapter 1, but to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. That means if everyone is already a child of God, how can you have the power given to you to become a child of God if you already are a child of God? Let me clear this up. Everyone is a creation of God. But if you want God to be your father, you're going to have to operate in faith. If you want God to be your heavenly father, if you want him to be the one you spend eternity with, if you want him to dwell on the inside of you, you're going to have to operate in faith. And that faith that you operate in, according to the scriptures, allows for you to say, as Paul said, I have the same spirit of faith. What was that, Paul? I believe what God said concerning Jesus. And what else? And I confess with my mouth. And because I believed and because I confess Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I believe he is my Lord and my Savior, then I have eternal life. I'm a child of God. I'm a new creation. God is my Father. Now, what about everyone else that doesn't confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior? The Bible says if a person will not believe and they will not confess, then they are not his. Wow. Well, you sound like you're being really, really specific. It's because I am. Because here's how heaven operates. Heaven operates by faith. That means that God operates according to his own word. And if a person comes in with some counterfeit, if they say something contrary to what God says, it don't work in heaven. Because heaven operates by faith. Scripture says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Everybody say that. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So in heaven, what would you expect if we were all right now permitted to just see and observe what's going on in heaven? What is it that you would see? You see things operating decently and in order, and you'd see peace and blessings and manifestations of good things. Why? Because God's word is good. And God doesn't have crazy going on in heaven. So since Jesus said, pray that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that means if you Pray that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Come on, give me the answer. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? To have a heavenly life, is that good or bad? 
Is it a good thing to have heaven manifested where you live? Is it a good thing to have a heavenly environment at home? Is it a good thing to have a heavenly environment in your bank account? Is it a good thing to have a heavenly environment in your life as a single person or as a married person? Is it a good thing to have a heavenly relationship with your children? So therefore, when he said, pray that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we ought to be walking around making what? Things like heaven. We ought to be doing that. We ought to expect that. Now, what if something doesn't reflect heaven? How do you make a difference? That's why we're here today. Because we recognize that we can make things better or we can make things change because Jesus is telling his disciples, now you operate in the God kind of faith. That means now I'm going to have to operate in a power that allows for God's ability to come to play or affect what's happening. Too many Christians are running around talking about, God, why don't you do something? God, do something. Oh, Lord, do something. Oh, Lord, one day you may do something. Oh, God, please do something. Do something. One person was praying and praying and praying and praying, or what they call praying. It wasn't really biblical praying. But they were like, Lord, do something by hook or crook. In other words, some way, somehow, make it happen. Oh, Lord, somehow, some way. And the Lord is like, you're going to have to operate in the God kind of faith. And now, this kind of teaching takes you as a believer in Christ Jesus from being a victim in, in, in life. When I say victim, it's like, okay, any way they want to treat me, that's the way it's going to be, to becoming a victor in life. See, if I want things to change, I'm going to have to apply the God kind of faith to change it. Why? Because that's what God did when he made the heavens and the earth. And when he formed and made man, he spoke it. And everything God does, he always speaks it first. And then it comes to pass. So since God is our father and we're told to be just like him, what makes you think you're going to have changes without you operating a God kind of faith? I just want to know. God had to use his faith to make things change. How are you going to make things change unless you operate the same way he operated by? Now let's go back to Mark chapter 11 again. Mark 11. In Mark chapter 11, verse 12, it says, And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, it what? The fig tree, the circumstance that the fig tree said, you're not getting any figs off this tree. Jesus spoke to the fig tree, and what did he say? In verse 14, no man may eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Or what it says here, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples, and his disciples did what? They heard it. So apparently when he said it, he said it loud enough for his own disciples to hear it. Now, knowing how the God kind of faith you believe and therefore you speak, Jesus must have believed that when he spoke to the fig tree that what he said was going to come to pass. And sure enough, after Jesus spoke it, they went into town, and when they went into town, on the next day in the morning, they came by the way of the fig tree route. And when they came by the fig tree, Peter sees Jesus, and he sees the fig tree, and Peter says, hey, 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 Jesus, 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 Je yes, Peter, what's up? Peter said, look at the fig tree. Let's look at it here in the verse 19, Mark chapter 11, verse 19. Everybody say this, Pastor Ziegler. You didn't write this. 
but you can read it. Okay. And when even was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily, or faithfully, truthfully, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, underline or highlight the word say, shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, where? In your heart. Believe that those things which he feeleth. Is that what it says? Those things which he thinketh. Those things that he emotionally can express. Those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. He shall have whatever he what? Whatever he says. Now, what are we doing here? We're talking here about the God kind of faith that Jesus told his disciples to possess. And he says to his disciples, he says, you're going to have to believe that what you say will come to pass and then dare to say it. If you want changes, or we could say it this way, he was letting his disciples know, you want to know what happened to this fig tree? What happened to this fig tree is the result of me operating in the God kind of faith. And then he told his disciples, now you make sure you operate in the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith doesn't make you a victim. The God kind of faith makes you a what? Victor. Everybody say, the God kind of faith doesn't make me a victim. It makes me a victor. I can change things with the God kind of faith. Now, remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13? We have in the same spirit of faith as we believe, therefore we, therefore we, come on, you didn't forget that, did you? Are y'all taking notes? I remember when I went to church, I always made sure church was classroom for me. All right? So make sure you listen to this again. Make sure you get this. As we believe, therefore we speak. As we believe, therefore we speak. As we believe, therefore we speak. So that's how the God kind of faith works. Now, why is it called the God kind of faith? It's called the God kind of faith because what you're to believe is what God says. So since God expresses what he believes and he says it, and if we believe what God says, then we are going to be in the God kind of faith when we agree with what God said. So anything that's contrary to what God says, I am to what? I'm to not to adopt that into my vocabulary and my lifestyle. Why? Because God only approves of the things that he believes and what he said. Got it? This is good news. This is really, really good news. So when Jesus told his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospels, it's interesting how his disciples went forth and began to proclaim and declare the God kind of faith concerning Jesus that God sent forth his son, he was crucified, he rose from the dead after three days, according to the scriptures, and he's ascended up on high and is alive, and whosoever believeth on him shall, or calleth upon him, because they believe in him, if you believe and call upon him, you shall be saved. They proclaim that. And people were getting saved by the thousands. And what happened? Because the devil is a spirit, an angel that has rebelled against God, and the devil hates God, the devil began to persecute them for proclaiming the word of faith to the point where they were put in jail. And when they were put in jail, 
the angel of the Lord came and brought them out of the jail and told them, now you go and stand in the temple and proclaim all the words of this life. In other words, they arrested you for teaching faith, but you go forth and continue to preach faith. Why? Because the preaching of the word of faith is what's going to make a change in the life of the people and the lifestyles of them that hear. So you go forth, stand in the temple, and continue preaching the word of faith. Or they said, or the angel said it this way, and preach all the words of this life. This life. What kind of life? The life that makes people world overcomers. The life that makes you no longer a victim, but one that can change things. Somebody says, but gee, if you, if you don't understand, I'm dealing with life. I'm poor. You can't say that you're poor if the Bible says that your God supplies all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Oh, I'm not sure I can do this. I'm not sure I can do this. But the Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The Bible says cast all your care over on the Lord because he cares for you. Now, when you understand how the God kind of faith works, let's say you run into a situation that's like a mountain. And that mountain is standing there looking like, I'm not moving. There's nothing you can do about this. I'm going to stay right here and impede your progress. But Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, the whosoever shall say unto this mountain, I'm a whosoever. Be thou removed or be thou cast into the sea. And do not doubt in my heart, but shall believe that those things which I say shall come to pass, I'll have whatsoever I say. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to operate in the God kind of faith, the spirit of faith, which I have received when I accepted Christ as my Savior, because faith was dealt or given unto me. And that's the way I am able to say I'm in the family of God. It's because of my stand of faith concerning Jesus. Then God says, now, Gary, walk by faith and not by sight. If you confront a mountain and the mountain needs to be moved, speak to the mountain, and the mountain has to obey you. You're going to have to change things, Gary. Lord, how come I got to change things? You know, the bully is a bad bully, and these circumstances that are coming against me, oh, Lord, why don't you do something about it? God says, if you don't do anything about it, I can't do anything about it. He's dependent upon us to release and to operate in the God kind of faith. This is, this is fundamental teaching in the doctrine of Christ. This is, this is believing 101 classroom. Now, how do you know that this needs to be taught? Because way too many believers are running around talking the circumstances instead of talking mountain remove and go to the sea. Too many believers are running around talking about, Lord, if you do something about it, then you know what? Uh, something will, will be done. And Jesus pointed out to his disciples in the Gospels, he said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, the tree will obey you. So he expects us to operate in the God kind of faith. He expects you to get results. And then what does he do when you operate in the God kind of faith? The faith that came from God. The faith that is the spirit of of faith from God. What will God do when you operate in faith and get results? He'll brag on you. He starts talking about, hey, look, you see my children? They get results. The Bible says in the book of 1 John, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. John said that because the world is going to react when you operate in the God kind of faith. 
Because the devil sets up what's called bulwarks or the devil sets up what's called, you know, what he thinks are gates where he can protect his program. But God says, I'm going to build my church upon what? The revelation, the revealing of this operation of life by faith in my word. And God says, and the gates of hell will not be able to stand up successfully against that faith that we believe is used. Got it? You got it? So when you come to church, you ought to be singing about, you ought to be expecting to get information on how to have a changed life. You're not supposed to come in to my, I sure could use a shot of adrenaline. Ooh, I just need to feel better. But see, the feelings may subside and leave. You still got to pay them bills. You still got to raise a family. You still got to have a successful marriage or a successful family. You got to learn how to be a successful single person in Christ. You got to learn how to be a successful business owner and own monopolies and conglomerates. How do you change things? That should be what you're here for, learning how to apply the words of this life. Instead of calling out, I quit. I'm discouraged. You know what I mean? Just say, Christians, Christians, believers in Christ Jesus that have been given the faith that overcomes the world. Christians talking like victims. Talking like victims. Well, I sure wish somebody would give me a break. You're in charge. You're in able to affect your life and your future. You're able to speak to fig trees. Will you do it? You're able to speak to mountains. Will you do it? The Bible says, acquaint now yourself with him and be at peace and good shall come unto you. In that same chapter of Job 22, the Bible says, when you acquaint yourself with the Lord, you, help, you, 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 you fellowship with your heavenly Father. You spend time. When I sing, when I'm playing there, I'm not doing that for y'all. I'm doing that for me and Jesus and the Father just getting on it because he loves to get praised. He is God and he deserves to be praised. But the thing about it is, as I acquaint myself with him through his word and through praise and worship and worship him and praise him and keep talking about how big he is and how great he is. He downloads in my heart how I should respond to things. He downloads it. Or I could say it this way. I just have a knowing. The Bible says, if you if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. How many of you would like to have more desires? Because God will give you desires so he can fulfill the desires. So the more I acquaint myself with him, the more desires keep coming up in my heart. And I'll start, hmm. I got a yearning for something. I got a taste for this. I got a desire for this. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. You know what? It sure would be nice. Where does that come from? That's coming from down in here. From down in here. And it rises up. And then if I, if I get into a situation where it's like, sure would like to have this, God says, now use your faith and make it happen. Use your faith. Use your faith. I gave you the God kind of faith. Now operate in the God kind of faith. And that's what happened with the fig tree. Jesus was like, I want a fig. I want a fig. Tree didn't have. He said, no man will eat from you hereafter forever. And he walked away. Went into town, came back the next day. Peter said, man, what happened to the fig tree? It had green leaves on it the day before. But the only thing I can think about that happened to the fig tree is that you spoke to it. That's correct. Jesus what is this about? You must have the God kind of faith. If you're going to make a change in this life, in this world, start operating in the God kind of faith and become an expert at faith. 
know how to use faith, know how to describe faith, know how to define faith, know how to walk in it. People, I've been, my wife and I just got back from our vacation. Somebody said, how long have you been married? 44 years, happily married, blessed marriage. Woo, we, we love each other, and God is good. He's always been good, but we've learned how to access and know how to put the goodness of God in our lives. Now, it must be hard. It must be hard, man, marry 44 years. No, it's almost like over, it's like it's almost overnight. And it just gets better and better and better and better and better. Why does it get better? Why does it get better? You must have a special wife. No, I know how to speak the words to have a special life. Some men call their wives the old ball and chain. I call my wives a good thing. I'm a poet, didn't even know it. I'm rhyming. No. But I call my wife a blessing. I don't call her a ball and chain. I call her a good thing. And because of that, we, we're living our life. Well, how, you know, how long is things going to happen? With the, the Bible says, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. A man that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and favor with the Lord. So you say, why are you talking about your wife? I'm just using her and I as an example. But I'm, I'm also talking about you. Do you know what my prayer life is? I'm a pastor. I am the pastor of Spirit Food Christian Center. Do you know what my prayer is for you? Do you know what it is for, for you on the basis of what you're now learning? Do you think when I go to talk to the Lord, you think the, I go to the Lord and say, oh, Lord, these people are a problem? No. You know what I do? I pray over you and say, Lord, thank you for opening their spiritual eyes so they can see the beautiful, wonderful blessings that you've provided for us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thank you, Lord, that they're growing up and maturing in faith. Thank you, O oh Lord, that they're receiving changes in their lives and that they're increasing, 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 increasing in the word of God. I pray for your families. I pray for your single lives, that you live successfully strong, living a celibate life in Christ, that you're not overcome with craziness and discombobulation. I pray that your finances are strong, that you're the richest congregation in the world. I pray for your abilities in Christ Jesus that you succeed. Now, I personally, just me, just, this just me. If I'm sitting out there and my pastor was talking about me like that, I'd be like, I hear you're good. I, I'm, I'm all with that because people in the world don't normally talk like that. They put your walk with Christ on the same level as gambling in Las Vegas, the lotto, where they may or may not, they may succeed. Ah, no, no, no. You will succeed in Christ. You will mature in Christ. You will grow in your faithfulness and dedication and your commitment to walking in the goodness of the Lord and the kindness and the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22. See, when I pray, I literally pray over you with the Word of God. And I expect every one of you to have testimonies and praise reports. How many of you got testimonies and praise reports that your life has changed since you've been planted in the house of God here? That's all of you? What about, look at the person right or left of you and say, what's up with you? You ain't got no testimony? <laughs> Everybody should be able to raise their hand. I'll, I'm going to look again. I'm gonna, my eyes are closed. I'm going to look out just a second. How many of you have a testimony about how the word of God has changed your life and has brought you to a place of victory? Raise your hand. Thank you very much. We're amongst family members. You ought to be able to raise your hand now. Because if you can raise your hand here amongst family, you'll open your mouth when you get out there, outside of the doors of the church. I love you. I thank God for you. 
And if you want a title to this message, it would be this way. Have faith for better. Have faith for better. Because when you have faith for better, then you won't be bitter. That's good preaching, isn't it? That, that sounds like a title to a book or something. I mean, if you have faith for better, then you won't live a bitter life. Instead of you being a victim, you operate as a victor. Instead of you complaining, you start declaring and naming and claiming what God has provided for you. I got to quit because I run out of time. But oh my goodness, what a blessing it has been to come and to hear the word of God today. Amen. Let's all bow our heads. as I, I want to thank you for tuning in today's lesson. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then I'm going to lead you into a confession of faith. If you say these words after me, you can become a child of the living God. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let us pray these words now, believing these words in our heart and saying them with our mouth. Dear God, I believe in my heart you sent your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. He was crucified. His blood was shed to wash me clean. And dear God, you raised him from the dead. So I confess with my mouth now, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. You are alive. I believe this in my heart. And because I confess you as my Lord, I am now a child of the living God. Father, thank you for making me your very own. I will live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to thank you for your continual support of this broadcast of Spirit Food Christian Center. We're so grateful for your participation. I'd like to give you an opportunity to participate by our Push Pay app. Text my SFCC to the number 77977. You'll receive further instruction on how to give. We're so grateful and thankful for your continual support and love. Remember, you're helping to make it happen. In Jesus' name, you amen. Are the sun.